Matt, it is finally time for our main event of the evening, UFC 248, coming at you live this Saturday from the T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas, Nevada. Matt, I am so excited so for this glad. fight. Even though I've ragged on the fact that guys with two-fight losing streaks should not and get title shots, and I still believe it, it's ridiculous, but we have Israel Adesanya taking on Yoel Romero. This is a great fight because realistically, you can market this fight, and I know the UFC is with your countdown series and whatnot, as... A clash of styles. And listen, Matt, you know I love a clash of styles because we have one of the best pure kickboxers in the game of MMA right now in your current cha champ, Adesanya. And he's taking on Yoel Romero, a great wrestler, but how often do we see his wrestling? Yeah, that's my problem. It's not a clash of styles. It's a kickboxer with a wrestling background who's just got absurd... Like, I can't even put into words how powerful of an athlete Yoel Romero is. Like, it's ungodly what he can do in the cage. And the crazy thing is, you think, hey, this guy's over 40, he's muscled up, you'd think at 185 pounds when the weight cut's tough, he's going to have no cardio whatsoever. And then all of a sudden, third round, and fourth round, and fifth round, Yoel Romero comes out of the cage, and it's insane. He's a monster. And here's the problem, though. Yoel Romero doesn't go for takedowns at all anymore. There was a point in his career where he was never takedown heavy, but he doesn't really go for many. The only times we see Yoel... He would change levels, at least. Not even that. He doesn't even faint takedowns. The only thing he'll ever faint is he'll go for a left leg on your right, or left arm on your right leg ankle pick, and he kind of fakes that, but there's not a lot of big elevation changes out of him, unless he's fighting another wrestler, oddly enough. When he's fighting a striker, and I'm kind of stealing this from Luke Thomas, Luke Thomas pointed this out, and it's perfect. Yoel Romero has two modes. He has attack mode and defense mode. There's no in between, and he can't mix his modes. So Yoel Romero either stands there and defends every punch that you're throwing, makes sure he doesn't take damage, and just preserves his energy. Just preserves his energy, because you know when that storm comes, it's going to be absurd. And then he waits and waits and waits and waits, and then when you're done attacking, he explodes. I don't think Israel Adesanya is going to make that problem, though. Israel Adesanya, throughout his UFC career, has been nothing short of just incredible. I know he had a close fight with uh, Kelvin Gaslam, and it was back and forth and back and forth. I actually think Gaslam does a few things better than Yoel Romero that can capitalize on Israel Adesanya's style. When you really think about it, Kelvin Gaslam, the two things he brings to the cage is boxing and absurd speed. Yoel has speed. He doesn't have what Kelvin does, though. Kelvin Gaslam mixes up his combinations. He's very fast with his hands. Yoel will throw more looping shots where if they do hit you, they're going to put you down and probably away. But it's kind of hard to hit you in the first place. We saw there was a few lapses in defense with uh, Robert Whitaker in their fights. But Robert Whitaker, and credit to that man, like, I know people keep on bringing it up, but, like, he basically fought Yoel Romero for an hour. It's like, wild. It's that, wild. That, that's and, so crazy. And, Matt, you look at Yoel Romero's body of work, and I say that. Like, he's one in, th what, three in his last four, yep. if I'm not mistaken, and he's lost two in a row. But they're great opponents. I mean, we're talking the Whitakers. We're talking the Paulo Costa that's that it. realistically would have deserved this title shot if the bicep didn't pop off the arm. And in terms of this fight, it's weird because Yoel Romero, out of those three losses... A lot of people thought he won two of them. Really, they did. And then you look at the win. So he fought. He fights Luke Rockhold. That was a five-round fight. That was a five-round main event. It was supposed to be for the interim belt. He missed, he missed weight. weight. And then he fights Whitaker. And... Oh, my God. Yeah. It went a little nuts. Now, in terms of this fight, it's weird because, yeah, he's taking on another champion and it's another striker. But I think it's a totally different tale yeah. when you're taking on a guy like Adesanya. And a lot of people are really pointing to the fact that city kickboxing has had such a rise. You've got Adesanya as a champ. You've got Volkanovski as a champ. Brad Riddle, everybody saw what he so can do good. recently. And there's more and more prospects that come out of that gym. Kai Kara France as well is another good example. But Israel Adesanya, to me, is the rising star of the UFC. If he's not the poster boy for the company right now, he has to be neck and neck with some of these top fighters. Put it this way, you, Israel Adesanya is more likely than not going to be on UFC for the video game. I know that's kind of a weird thing to go to, but when you look at like who's been on it, it was John Jones, Alexander Gustafson, then the second one, Ronda Rousey, Conor McGregor, then the third one, Conor McGregor. Like Those are all massive stars, except for Conor Gustafson. But Israel Adesanya has that kind of he has the capability to not just be a star in the world of mma he has that like he can go outside of mma he could do movies he can do talk shows like israel adesanya I, we just keep on going on about how great he is but like there's not many things he isn't good at he speaks very well he's really good at marketing himself yoel romero can end that very quickly though that's the problem like i feel like the ufc is kind of counting their eggs for the hatch because yoel romero all he has to do like you said he just needs one punch. He and just needs one knee. He only needs one. He's the most powerful guy Israel Adesanya has ever fought. And this never happens. You didn't hear Luke Rockhold going out on a PR campaign to call out Yoel Romero. I bet point. you his hand was shaking when he was trying to sign the contract. But Israel Adesanya called out Yoel Romero. He wanted this fight, which is wild. It really is. Here's the kicker, and here's where I'm going with my pick. So you look at the Whitaker fights, they're in and out. Like you said, Romero might conserve some energy, then he goes for a burst. Then he does the same thing, takes a round off, possibly, or half a round. 
and then he moves forward. But when you're taking on Adesanya in a pressure type of fighter, a guy who's good on his back foot as well, which, and we saw with Whitaker, maybe an injury here, injury there. Things didn't go his way, but he was able to pull out and get the victories. But with Adesanya, if you're if you're out of Sonny and listen, he knows way more about the fight game than I do. But if He's I could more than both if, of us, yeah, know. exactly. If I could compare it to the Paulo Costa fight, when Costa had success, it was when he had Romero up against the cage and he pressure, pressure, Body pressure. Shots. And like you said, Romero does that thing where he moves in and out, and he rope doped in that fight too, which it works for you all, Romero. It did not work for you on Ion Kutilaba. But in terms of this fight. I really think Adesanya is going to be able to get the win. And I think it's it might be another five-round decision. But it's interesting because you it's think, well, Yoel Romero has so much experience with these five-round fights. And he's continued to fight five rounds. But so is Adesanya. Yeah. Exactly. And Adesanya, people forget, that, like, he doesn't only have 15 fights. You know that. He's got a thousand. I know it's not a thousand. He has 97 <laughs> kickboxing fights. I'm pretty sure that's the number. It's just the amount of experience he has is purely a striker. And... You kind of went diff- a different way with why Adesanya's going to win. I also think Adesanya's going to win. But I think he's going to win because he can stand at such a range where as he's attacking, kind of pot shotting you, when you do decide to make your burst, he's already so far away from you that he's going to have that extra millisecond, that extra half second to kind of figure out and read what you're going to do. And I don't know if you guys have noticed, Israel Adesanya's really, really good at moving his head and his trunk movement. And if he can make Yoel Romero miss a lot, that's what no one's ever been able to do. No one's been able to make Yoel Romero miss. People have been uh, able to absorb the hits from him. But, and again, Chael Sonnen, there's two ages to win a fight. You can either outskill a guy or out-tough a guy. Robert Whitaker was able to out-tough Yoel Romero. Paulo Costa basically beat him in his own game, which is just, let's just throw bombs and see what happens. Israel Adesanya, I really feel like he's going to have to kind of finesse his way into this fight. He's going to have to throw some crazy techniques. He's going to have to keep Yoel guessing the whole entire time. So while Romero, while Romero is in that defensive mode, he's going to have to be able to land shots to the leg, go to the body, go to the head, mix it up on Romero, and hopefully... If something will open up and you can go for that knockout shot. I think it's a great fight, though. I really do. I know we were kind of ragging on Yoel for being on two losses, but there's not a person in this world who doesn't think Yoel Romero's not a top three middleweight in the world. And if you're fighting guys like that, you can't really question the champion. But yes, official pick, Israel Adesanya, fifth round TKO. And if you want to keep the champ that's really the face of the franchise active, you have to continue that's to give him guys, point. even when the top of the division is log jam but there's injuries as well and you can't have uh whitaker hopping in there for a rematch you can't have paulo costa do the injury so you get the next best thing and you all romero a guy who wants the fight who's game all the time and he's taking on one of the best in the business in adesanya so matt you you've got the champ winning i, I get do. the champ winning we're just going to take a couple extra seconds because we're already a, a ways are, into this video <laughs> but if adesanya gets the win here yeah. what's next is it whitaker is it cannoneer is it costa Costa, yeah. it's Costa. Without a doubt. There was so much heat behind that fight. Like, that fight sells instantly. You have a guy who's really good at speaking versus possibly the most handsome man on planet Earth who's built out of, like, Whose Twitter game stone. is bad, man. It's bad. Stop saying what you're saying just, on Twitter. Uh, but still, Israel Adesanya, A, in a lot of the press conferences, it's just going to be kind of able to punk Paulo Costa for a lot of it just because he is, you know... He's really good at speaking, and Paulo Costa's English isn't his first language. But that fight just sells itself on who they are. Not even the body of work. You just kind of have to look at who they are. They look like who you want your MMA champions to be. Like, they're kind of these superhero figures. Israel Adesanya, like you said, if he can keep on winning, it's not just like, oh, he can reach, like, Jorge Masvidal level of fame, which, don't get me wrong, is an insane level of fame. It's like, oh, how far can he go? Can he get to that Conor McGregor level? Can he possibly get to that Ronda Rousey level? Like, those stars that, even if you don't follow the sport, like, our grandmother might have heard their name. You know what I mean? Just people who know nothing about MMA would still recognize their name, and I feel like Adesanya to keep someone will be able to get to that point. Matt, this is one heck of a I'm fight, excited. and we're really looking forward to this card. UFC 248, five right minutes there. plus for the main event, the co-main, two minutes for the main card, and the prelims, so you're not going to want to miss that with Fight Night Picks and UFC 48. Matt, let's get, let's into, get it. into it.